This week, ghosts from the past came back to haunt some of the biggest potential 2016 candidates. Here is ABC's senior Washington correspondent, Jeff Zeleny. For 2016 hopefuls. For obstacles to overcome. For Hillary Clinton, it was an old audio recording this week that went viral. From her time as a young Arkansas lawyer, she defended a rape suspect in 1975, and she explained how she helped him get a light sentence, even though it seems she believed he was guilty. It took a lot of different tests. I had to apologize, which he passed, which forever destroyed my faith. Fresh fodder after the 12 year old rape victim, who's now 52, criticized Clinton. Hillary Clinton took me through hell, the woman told the Daily Beast. For Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, a more recent case is making headlines. Documents unsealed this week show prosecutors were trying to prove he was at the center of an illegal fundraising scheme during his 2012 recall election. Walker's not been charged and says the claims are politically motivated. The media jumps on this, some of the left spin this. You get our detractors out there trying to claim there's something more than there is. And for New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Bridgegate still seems to hang over everything. Even at this gathering of conservatives Friday. I'm called lots of different names, but indirect has never been one of them. And then there's Texas Governor Rick Perry, dogged again by his own words this time comparing homosexuals to alcoholics. I may have the, the genetic coding that I'm inclined to be an alcoholic, but I have the desire not to do that. And I look at the homosexual issue as the same way. He stopped short of an apology, but backpedaled this week. Now I readily admit I've stepped right in it. For Clinton, Walker, Christie, Perry, and all potential candidates, how they contend with the ghosts of their past is a critical part of the roadmap for their future. For this week, Jeff Zeleny, ABC News, Washington. All right, thanks to Jeff. And now back with the roundtable, Greta, you were one of those that interviewed Hillary Clinton uh, as part of this rollout. How has it gone? Well, you know, first of all, this whole thing about this rape victim, yeah. I think one of the lousiest reporting I've seen in a long time, with both sides of the political spectrum, Scott Walker in Wisconsin Republican and Hillary Clinton Democrat, because what she wrote in this affidavit was not her feelings about the victim, but she was seeking to get a court-appointed psychiatrist, and she said she was told this totally routine. Likewise, Scott Walker, the headline says that he's accused of a crime by a prosecutor. That's what prosecutors do. They accuse you of a crime. And if the prosecutor really thought he committed a crime, he would have charged him with a crime. So you've got lazy reporters who don't look at the court file for Hillary Clinton, and you've got lazy reporters who uh, don't understand the system in Wisconsin. But Terry, hearing that tape and hearing uh, Hillary Clinton laughing about how the guy was she knew the guy was guilty, basically, or she believed he was guilty. Look, th th there's no question that that's going to be politically damaging for the people who already don't like her. We're such a polarized society right now. You, you know, uh, the person you like could have done something horrible, and you're still going to like them. I mean, there's really not that much in the middle. That said, uh, she was clearly zealously defending her client, and that is what she's ethically obligated to do as a lawyer. Well, absolutely. I mean, look, the people who call themselves constitutional conservatives, I mean, the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says you have the right to counsel, and that counsel must fight for your interests. If you don't like that, then take it up with Thomas Jefferson. But, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, there is a judge, there is a prosecutor, there is a jury. Your job as a defense attorney is to go after it and get your... She also wasn't laughing at, at the victim. I mean, this is important. If you no, actually go back, she was laughing at, at this polygraph, polygraph, which is polygraph. very different. And Absolutely. that's why this reporting was so sloppy about her and very sloppy about Scott Walker, too. And, and polygraphs are a joke. We're going to have plenty of time to debate the 2016 election. She had a terrible rollout on the book. I mean, I, I'm hearing today it's just dropped in, in, the, in the sales. But I don't think something... They're claiming did, they're doing fine on stuff. But I don't think we'll something see. she did when she was 27 at the end of the day. I mean, look, we've all changed. <laughs> I was different. I'm only 36, and I was totally different at 27. So uh, I don't think this is going to end up being... Being a, a big damaging thing for Hillary Clinton. I think there's going to be a lot on both sides that we can we can run on and have a good spirited debate. Okay, I want to turn to the other one of the other big stories this week, which was the IRS. We had a very contentious hearing with the IRS commissioner about those missing emails. Listen to Paul Ryan. I am sitting here listening to this testimony. I just I don't believe it. That's your problem. Nobody believes you. You ask taxpayers to hang on to seven years of their personal tax information in case, in case they're ever audited, and you can't keep six months' worth of employee emails? All right, look, it looks horrible for the IRS, Greta, but let me ask you the reverse of this. Do you really think 
that somebody at the IRS intentionally destroyed six months of emails to cover up uh, something? Ba Do you really believe there's a cover up that big? Based on the timeline, no, because apparently the complaint was made before there was an investigation. However, I certainly think there's an awful, I don't think this is a phony scandal like the president does. Neither does Secretary Hillary Clinton when she spoke to us in an interview think it's a phony scandal. And I think it's terrible that it's dragging out this long. And I think it's terrible that the IRS tells the panel in the committee in February that the emails will be produced and it'll take two years and they don't even exist and they know about it. I think there's a lot of smoke there and we need an aggressive investigation. But do I think someone deliberately did it ahead of time? I don't think anyone's that smart or clairvoyant. And that's clearly the, the implication from Paul Ryan here, right? Absolutely. And it's another reflection that there is absolutely no zero trust across the partisan line. Absolutely none. The, the notion that this may not time out correctly or that it is far-fetched will not be accepted as a legitimate explanation by half of the country. And it would be the same if the situation were reversed. See, but this isn't, I don't think this is just about a lack of trust. This is about a real issue. The IRS, supposed to be the most independent organization, uh, coming after Tea Party conservative groups, in essence by their own admission, and then finding out that, oh goodness, we lost all these emails. I mean, this is a lot of, not just smoke, this is fire, and this is something that, you know, maybe there was no scandal behind this, but that's what we absolutely have to get to the bottom of. It's not a partisan issue as much as it's just reality. Well, there, there, there is no scandal here. They went after the left and the right, arguably, but here, what this is about is distraction, just like the whole Benghazi thing. They don't want to talk about how they won't extend but, but let me, let me, let me They don't want to talk you, about... Aren't you a little no, concerned talk about, about six the, months worth of emails? Uh, well, look, uh, there's, there, there is an email that yeah. where she said my computer crashed. I think it doesn't time out yeah, right. But, but I think no, you're no, no, let me just say, this is about almost, distraction. This is about refusing to extend unemployment, uh, raise on, uh, 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 the uh, minimum wage. I think you make a huge... Right. Right. I, think, I think you underestimate. Of course you will out of time. We'll pick this up. We'll pick it up next week. Thank you very much.